So today we will talk about Contiki, okay? And Contiki is yet another operating system for wireless sensor networks. So if we if we take an overview of Contiki and and try to understand what it what it is and what it does, it's basically we end up basically by having the same answer and the same description that we had for TinyOS and for Motran. Okay, so all these systems basically provide you. Um, a way for writing application for sensor networks, a way for testing such applications in a simulation simulated environment, and of course a way to deploy your application on uh, real hardware. Okay. And again, if we if uh, we look at the main features of Contiki in this case, uh, we can see that many of these features are in common with what claimed by Tiny Asset Motrunner authors, okay? So again, Contiki is an open source operating system, highly portable because it supports many, both, uh, let's say, from both, both points of view, so it supports many hardware platforms and it can be uh, executed on any host machine, okay? So you can basically use Contiki on any OS machine since it's based on C programming basically. We have a couple of differences again with respect to TinyOS. Uh, for example, in Contiki, for the first time we see the concept of multitasking, okay? So we can actually deploy several tasks on a sensor node and the Contiki operating system will manage the execution of these tasks concurrently, something that in TinyOS was not possible and something that in Motrunner was managed by the virtual machine, if you remember. Um, the typical hardware configuration for uh, platforms which can run Contiki is basically the same as uh, the one uh, needed for TinyOS or Motrunner, so a typical configuration could be uh, in the order of two kilobytes of RAM memory, okay, so very little memory, and uh, up to 40 kilobytes of ROM memory, okay. So Contiki can indeed be run on very, very cheap and low-cost devices with such um, requirements, okay. And uh, as I said several times so far, from what I have seen, okay, uh, in, in my studies on, on this uh, research topic, the, the, I mean, operating systems for IoT and wireless sensor network, um, well, Contiki has been widely adopted in the industry, okay? So I have um, explained several times already that if you try to make a comparison between TinyOS and Contiki, from a performance point of view, they are basically the same, they behave the same, but while TinyOS has been used a lot in research studies, okay, for example, for testing new protocols or for, you know, whatever uh, activities involved in research studies, well, Contiki has been used a lot in uh, um, um, real deployed applications, okay? And probably, I say probably because I do not know the exact answer to this question, but probably the reason why Contiki has been used um, so many times in commercial applications is that it already provides uh, implementations for many services, okay? Including the network stack, okay? So as we will see, during this lecture, Contiki already gives you an implementation of uh, two different networks uh, stacks. Uh, one which is, let's say, a proper, well, not a proper, but a lightweight version of the TCP IP network stack. And this is very useful if you want to reuse mechanisms that were, uh, let's say, um, designed for TCP IP networks. 
and it is also very very good if you plan to directly connect your sensor networks or your your sensors what whatever these these devices are to the internet okay you know the internet is a tcp ip based network so if you want to connect something to it you must at least respect this uh, network stack um, at the same time, Contiki gives uh, the developers also um, a network stack which is kind of different from TCP IP. It's called Rhyme, okay? And it's a very, very lightweight network stack which gives just the uh, fundamentals, networking primitives such as um, a broadcast, unicast communication, and so on and so forth. So something more close to TinyOS active messages abstraction that we have seen in TinyOS. And in fact, if you go on the Contiki website, which is this one, Contiki OS, um, right in the main page, there are really a lot of examples of applications that are deployed out there, which are based on Contiki, okay? So, for example, um, you have the Rad DX, which is a device for uh, sensing uh, radiations, okay? So the amount of radiation that is uh, in an environment. And this is, is an object that you can actually buy and whose firmware is based on Contiki. Then there is this uh, uh, Wigwag, which is a company which makes basically products for uh, home automation, so sensors for uh, lights, temperature, thermostats, this kind of stuff and everything is operated using Contiki um, there are also some let's say interesting uh, applications for for example tracking animals in the wild so um, <clears throat> so for example uh, using Contiki uh, people uh, from this is University of Oxford actually so kind of a research study um, so they they managed to track where these uh, animals were in the city basically in order to uh, understand better their behaviors okay and so on and so forth so you, if you are interested you go on the Contiki website there are a bunch of applications uh, which were developed starting uh, on top of Contiki basically <coughs> Okay. So there are a bunch of other important features that Contiki has and um, I'm just, let's say, summarizing here the main ones. There are many documents then on, a, on the um, Contiki website that if you are interested you can read and uh, those documents there's also a nice wiki that you can read uh, and I will show you in a while that explain in details what are all the features of Contiki. Of course, for time reason, I will not enter into the details of all of these, but I mean, if you are interested to continue uh, working in this area, then it's good to, to go there and have a read, okay? So what I think that um, important features that Contiki has but are not present, for example, in TinyOS, are dynamic loading, also known as reprogramming or over-the-air programming, or this kind of names, which basically means that you can reprogram a sensor node without physically attaching it to a control device. Okay? So just by transmitting a new application over the air, you can flash the node's memory in order to boot a new application. Okay? That's really very, very important when your uh, sensor network is deployed somewhere which is difficult to access. Okay? For example, in a very uh, difficult, uh, hostile place where um, getting there is, is maybe costly or you, you don't want uh, to go there because it's uh, uh, uncomfortable or for some other reasons, basically. So Contiki, uh, as Mutraner, 
uh, provides a way for doing this over the air reprogramming, which, ma which, which is sometimes very, very useful. And another, as I said, another um, thing that Contiki has is a sort of uh, multi-threading uh, support, okay? That, that is, again, quite useful when you want your nodes to run multiple applications at the same time, okay? So you may have a node which runs not a single application, but maybe two or three different processes, okay? One may be a process that just samples the temperature, one may be um, a process that controls the communication stack and so on and so forth. So uh, by doing this we will see that we can have a more flexible design and sometimes we can even write an application with just a few lines of code basically. Of course there are also some cons of Contiki and uh, to me one of the worst is that again the documentation is rather scarce, okay? Um, I don't know the, the, the main reason of this probably because there are few people that are taking care of this part but at least to me, what is important is that, is that when I approach a new operating system or a new technology, this is explained clearly. And sometimes with Contiki, it's not like that, and you actually have to go inside the source code in order to understand what a particular feature does. Okay? And that can be, you know, kind of boring, and it can, you know, you, you, you may not want to to go in, inside the source code, source code to understand what uh, an operating system that you are supposed to use does. Um, but let's say uh, now the, the version of Contiki that you have on your operating on your virtual machine is 2.6 or 2.7, I guess. Now version three is um, is available. And it seems that with version 3 they have uh, upgraded a little bit the documentation by inserting this wiki on the website. Now before we go to the system overview, let me just show you this uh, wiki. So this is the Contiki website and if you go here on support, you have, well, the let's say official documentation which is this one gives you, well, it's stuck to version 2.6 and gives you, let's say, a menu with all the modules that you uh, need to understand. <clears throat> but I've seen that if you skip this and you directly go to the wiki, which is this one, this gives uh, a very... Um, quick starting point for understanding how the system <coughs> works, okay? So if you're interested in using Contiki, I guess that this is the proper way to start. And for example, um, these internals, which are the module basically provided by Contiki, is a page where you have all the interesting things explained, okay? So for example, input and output, uh, you have a guide on how to use serial communication, a guide how to use the LEDs of your uh, platforms, and so on and so forth. Uh, you have here, uh, we will go a little bit in the details of, of this, um, a documentation on how processes are executed by the Contiki operating system, and so on and so forth. Um, and a part of this, which is a rather practical uh, guide, you also have a bunch of papers, uh, proper uh, research papers, so published in international journals and conferences, which basically explain either the Contiki mechanisms, okay, so how Contiki was implemented and what are the functionalities of Contiki and so on and so forth, plus um, a bunch of papers that explain how the radio stack of Contiki works. So how um, this uh, lightweight TCP IP stack was implemented, what are the functionalities that uh, can be 
uh, run on top of it and so on and so forth. Okay, so again, if you are interested in understanding um, in details how Contiki works, I strongly suggest to, to go on the website and you know have a read here and there of the functionalities that are provided. <clears throat> okay. So what I will do now is a very, very a quick uh, introduction to Contiki, explaining these functionalities, and then basically we will look at source code to see what are the differences, and maybe run a couple of applications in, inside Kuja, okay? You can also follow me on your virtual machine. <clears throat> so when you run the Contiki system on a sensor node, you are basically um, running a system which which consists of these uh, parts here. So you have a kernel, which is the core of the system, and it's basically, it, it can be compared to the virtual machine of Motrunner. So it's a process which is always running in background, okay? And this is completely different to TinyOS, where the... Um, there's no kernel and the operating system is really linked to the application and compiled and installed on the sensor node with only the functionalities that you need. Instead here you have a kernel which is event-driven, so basically um, it, its operation is um, uh, driven by events of different types, maybe interrupts or timers. Then you have a set of libraries which basically are uh, pieces of code which can be called directly from an application. And as you can imagine, these libraries are used for transmitting messages, interfacing with the hardware, so uh, for example, lighting up the LEDs and so on and so forth. Then, then there's an uh, important block with, which is the program loader and this block is a process which is invoked by the kernel when uh, an application must be executed. So this block here, the program loader, takes care of loading the program source code in memory, okay, in order to be executed, uh, prepare the memory space for all the variables of your applications, initializing those variables, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is a block, let's say, of the core Contiki operating system. And then on top of this core, you, you can have several processes, okay? And um, this is basically due to the fact that Contiki kind of supports multi-threading, so there's more than one process which is actually running on top of a sensor node. And as we will see, these processes may be Applications, so uh, let's say actual application which are written by a developer, but can also be uh, processes that can be used by applications in order to do something. Okay, so again, some sort of supporting processes. <clears throat> uh, okay, so for example, one of these uh, supporting processes can be the communication protocol stack, which runs uh, completely uh, detached for, from an application and expose, exposes some uh, functionalities that an application can uh, invoke. For example, transmission of a message in unicast or in broadcast, uh, reception of a message and this kind of stuff. Uh, another service could be the driver of the sensor device so a process which takes care of um, actually sampling measurements on a particular sensor, or another process could be a data handling algorithm which uh, runs uh, through the data that you have collected and returns, may return some uh, processed uh, uh, value out of this data. And of course, you can have an application which runs and while the application runs, you can replace those services, okay? Since they are, they are not basically linked directly to the applications, but they can be 
sort of dynamically linked against your application. So you can, in real time, remove services and add other ones, depending on what you need, basically. Um, so the kernel provides only the most basic features, and <coughs> the rest of the system is, is, is implemented as libraries, as I was saying. And these most basic features which are provided by the, by the kernels are basically uh, related to um, memory management, okay? So moving basically data uh, from here to there and so on and so forth. So for example, the memcopy function, which is generally used to copy bunch of data from one part of the memory to the other part, is already implemented, while if you need uh, more sophisticated functions, for example, the uh, A2I function, which converts um, um, integers uh, should be included manually either with the inclusion of a proper file or you know with uh, with a proper function which is written by the developer <clears throat> so as I was saying the the kernel is event driven it means that it will uh, react to external events which may be interrupts from the hardware, timers that fire, or any other event, and also provide support for multi-threading. And uh, let's say in this sense, those threads which are run uh, concurrently on a sensor node are not uh, exactly the same uh, structures as you have in a traditional uh, architecture but they are some sort of simplified. And in Contiki, these simplified threads are called proto-threads. Okay? So when, whenever you read the keyword proto-thread in Contiki, it means that it's a process, a thread, which is kind of simplified. And in particular, this simplification comes from the fact that these threads are not separated in memory, so there's not a separate stack, a separate memory for each thread, but they are kind of um, uh, sharing the same memory in order to simplify the memory management itself and to save memory. This is of course related to the fact that we do not want to include a lot of complexity in, uh, in our sensors since they are resource constrained and, and you know, memory constrained and so on and so forth. Um, Coming to, let's say, some keywords, or basically some uh, uh, <coughs> useful uh, definitions, in Contiki you can define processes by, so basically proto-threads, okay, by using the following macros, which are C keywords, which you can use in order to define one of these processes. So before actually defining what a process uh, does, you have to define its name, and this is done with the keyword define process, where you pass basically two parameters. The first one is an internal name of the process, so basically um, similar to the name of a variable. And the second one is a, a string that basically gives a textual description of the thread itself. We will see examples in, in, a, in a while. Uh, then you have two macros to define the start, start point and end point of a process, which are process begin and process end. And uh, let's, let's say in between these two macros, you have all the logic, all the source code that your process or proto-thread should execute. So this is kind of similar to C function where you have basically the, the brackets that basically defines where a function starts and when a function ends. And then you have the body of a process which basically starts with this um, macro process thread which, which actually needs to be uh, declare like this and we will see what is the purpose of these parameters in just a few seconds basically. 
There are other useful macros that you want to use in, in your processes. One useful macro is auto start process, passing the pointer to a process as a parameter. And this macro informs the Contiki kernel of what is the, the process or what are the processes that should be loaded automatically when the node uh, boots up. Okay. So this one, let's say, in, is uh, comparable to the boot.boot .boot event in TinyOS. Okay? It tells the core of the operating system on, on what to do when the node boots up. And then there are macros, which are kind of uh, fundamentals, to block the uh, operation of one um, thread or, or proto-thread in order to wait for a condition or for an event to come. And again, here you can uh, see a um, fundamental, a major difference between Contiki and TinyOS. I don't know if you remember, but in TinyOS, we do not have the concept of waiting, okay? Nowhere in TinyOS, we need to wait for an event to come, okay? We have proper functions which are the event handlers which are executed when an event comes but if there's nothing to do the tiny OS scheduler will basically put your node in an idle state okay if you do not do not have timers if you don't do not have anything to do then you know your node can can go to sleep basically in contiki you actually have to uh, explicitly uh, inform the kernel that your process has to wait for something. And you can do this in different ways. You can either wait for a generic event by using this, ma this uh, macro, process wait event, and, and then after an event comes, you can check what kind of event was received. And <clears throat> the next, sorry, another different way of waiting is to pass a condition to this macro, process wait event until, so that you can wait only for a particular condition to be verified, okay? So for example, here you can specify that you want to wait only for timer events, or you can wait only for, for example, the value of a sensor node being greater than or lower than a threshold that you have set. We will see examples, of course, but the important thing to remember is that in Contiki you have to explicitly inform the kernel that your process should go in a wait state and waiting for some conditions. Okay, this is, let's say, um, an example of the most simple application that you can write in Contiki. Uh, it's an application that does nothing but writing on the output hello world, okay? Now, first of all, you may ask yourself, okay, what's the exact purpose of the printf here? Where this string will be printed? And, um, well, the answer is that the printf statement in Contiki, it's basically comparable to the dbg statement in TinyOS. So it's basically used for debugging purposes and for printing something to screen while the uh, simulation goes on. In this case, we will see that if we run this in Kuja, we will get hello world on the Kuja uh, terminal window, basically. But let's, uh, in fact, let's actually open the source code directly from the virtual machine so that you can also open it. <coughs> so um, all the code of Contiki, it's here in uh, home, Contiki minus 2.7, and then there are a bunch of folders, for example, the examples folder 
contains several Contiki examples that you can run and if you open the hello world uh, where is it here hello world <coughs> folder you can then open the hello world.c file so regarding uh, source code Contiki uses C programming language so this is the actual source code for the hello world file so you have a bunch of libraries to include this one contiki.h it's basically the file that includes most of the contiki kernel libraries and then depending on what your application has to do it might be uh, um, you, you, you I mean, you may be requested to add other libraries. For example, whenever you want to use the printf function for debugging purposes, you have to include the standard input-output library. Okay. So the first thing that you have to do is to define a process. Okay. Define uh, how many processes your application will be composed of, and for each process, you have to define a variable that uh, will be then used for referring to the process and a name for the process itself. So in this case, we have only one uh, process in our application, which is the hello world process. And the string description is the following, hello world process. Very, very simple. We use then the, ma the macro auto start processes and we pass as a parameter the pointer to this variable, which is the one that uh, is linked to the, this process, in order to inform to the Contiki kernel that the hello world process is the one that must be executed when the node starts. Okay. So you can have several of these processes, and not all of them may be started uh, at the beginning, maybe some of the processes may be started by other processes, okay? We will see examples of this, how to start up different processes. So you may, for example, have a particular process which does something which should be executed only when a particular condition is met, okay? So you may want the global, uh, let's say, main process to start this new process only when something happens, okay? And maybe kill it when uh, uh, it is not needed anymore. So inside, uh, so to specify the, the code that must be run inside a process, you have to use the process thread macro passing the variable related to the process that you want to specify and two other supporting variables. We will see, not here, but in another example, what is the purpose of this, this variable. And inside this macro, you use the process begin and process end macros to uh, delimit what is the scope of your thread. So what are the instructions that your thread must um, execute? In this case, as you can see, between these two macros, there's only one instruction, which is a printf, okay? So the only thing that this process does is printing hello world to, to the output, okay? And that's it. So let's see if we can uh, run it, okay? And let's see what happens. So you can open Puja. will take a while. Okay. You can crea create a new simulation. And then you can start adding uh, modes. Uh, I like to use the sky modes, but you can use actually any one of these. 
All these uh, modes are actually supported by Contiki. It means that you can either simulate them, but if you actually own the, 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 the proper hardware, you can deploy the code on this hardware, okay? And see, and actually make it run on a real architecture. Um, then you have to browse for the process. Um, you can go here, home, user, Contiki, examples, uh, hello world. And then you can pass the hello world.c file, which is the main source file, the one that we were commenting um, just a minute ago. You open it. And then you can directly compile the application. Okay, so directly from Kuja you can uh, perform the process of compilation and simulation. If you remember in TinyOS we had first to compile it for simulation and then simulate it using Tossing or Kuja if you wanted. Okay, so you can click here on compile in order to compile the application. Okay, if everything goes fine, you will not see any warning or error message here in the compilation output. And at this point, you can click on create and decide how many nodes to create in your simulation. Okay. In this case, I will just create one node with random positioning, so I will not specify the coordinates for this node. I will just create a random positioning. Okay, I have my node here. I can set the speed limit for the simulation to 100%. If you remember, this is done to um, match the simulation time with the real time. Okay, so seconds in the simulation corresponds to real second in the real life, basically. And then you can start the application. The application is started and I see something here on the output, okay? Now, uh, you can, let's say, ignore the first three uh, lines here and just looking at the last two lines. <coughs> the second last says starting hello world process. This is uh, a result of the auto start process directive that we have inserted. And then the last line is the hello world statement that we have printed to the debug, okay? So we can track the, let's say, function, functionalities of a node here. What happens if I add another uh, mode like this? I've added another node here. I start the simulation, I see a new node, so here in a different color, again saying hello world, okay? So the code is exactly the same, so this node number two here that I have inserted just prints hello world to the output as well, okay? Um, what we can do also, in order to make this a little bit more interesting, so let me just uh, reload the simulation. So I'm basically clearing everything and reload the simulation. I want just one node. So I can click. Oh, can I remove all nodes? Okay. So you have only one node here. I now show you how you can uh, connect also this Contiki process to Node-RED, okay? In order to have uh, these uh, printf statements not only in the mode output window of, of Kuja, but also in Node-RED, so in a com completely separate process out of Kuja, okay? That could be a starting point for then implementing the prototype of your choice. So if you remember, in order to start Node-RED, you have to open uh, a new terminal and type Node-RED here. Oops. Node minus RED. OK. 
Okay. <clears throat> and then you have to open the browser. And go on localhost port 1880. Okay, I still have my old uh, flows here. I can select them and delete them like this. Okay, and then <clears throat> what we will do in order to connect a node to node red is still uh, using the serial serial server here. Why well, doesn't work? Okay, so you can uh, uh, do uh, right click on the mode, then you have mode tools for Sky One or for the name of your node. And then there's a serial socket server, which basically opens a server TCP socket, okay? Which listens on port uh, 60001. So on Node-RED, what we will do, we will create a TCP client socket, which connects to the same port of the Kuja socket, okay? And then we will just run the output of this socket on the payload. So we will listen, no, sorry, we will connect to port 60001 uh, at host localhost. And we will output a uh, stream of string, so a stream of characters, each one delimited by a string delimiter, which is the slash n, which is the delimiter of uh, the printf, basically. Of course, here you can use the delimiter that you prefer, basically. So we try to deploy this. No, why this is not correctly configured? Local. Okay, deploy. You see, you see connected here, it means that this TCP block is actually connected to the TCP uh, server here. And in fact, you should see client connected here. It means that Kuja is connected to Node-RED. If I start now the simulation, what I would like to see is that the hello world uh, statement is also written on Node-RED. So I start the simulation, I get the same output as before, I go here and I actually do not see anything. Uh, why is that like this? <clears throat> oh, maybe this one. Let me try again. Um, reload. Okay, it's connected. Start this. Oh, there's something wrong here. Why oh, doesn't work?
Okay, sorry for that. So I see here that some bytes are transferred to the socket, but I, I don't see the output here. Well, I will investigate it later, don't worry. <coughs> so <coughs> let's close this. Okay. So we, we will see now the, um, an application which, is, which we have already seen in TinyOS and in Motrunner, which is basically the, the popular Blink application. So the one that makes your LEDs uh, blink. And this is basically useful in order to understand how timers and events work in, in Contiki. Okay? And in order to uh, deploy such application, we will create a Contiki application which is actually composed of two processes. Okay, so we will see an example of multi threading here. We have one pro uh, the first process which is very similar to the, um, to the one that we have seen now, so it basically just prints something to the output. To make it a little bit more interesting, we will also use a timer that each time it fires, it will increment a counter and write the uh, value of this counter in, in the output, okay? So we will see each time that the output changes. And the second process basically starts a timer and um, increments again a counter and toggles the LEDs according to this counter, okay? So basically it performs the same stuff that we have seen, so uh, toggling all the LEDs in, uh, sequentially. Um, the application is called Blink application. It's actually not uh, in the uh, Kuja or Contiki examples, but I have put it on the uh, class website, so you can go uh, <coughs> on the class website here and uh, here where there's Contiki, there's the sample Blink application, you can download it, it's just an, ar an archive that you can extract and then you can put the folder under uh, Contiki examples, okay? So if you download it and open it, it looks like this, Blink. So there's a um, source file here, the Blink C source file. And comparing it to the hello world, we now have a new in file to include, which is the let's.h uh, header, which as you can imagine, contains the functions that we use to triggering on and off the LEDs, basically. Um, here we declare two processes. So one process which is the same as before, so it's the hello world process with name hello world process. And then we have also another process which is the blink process, okay? And the description for it is led blink process. You can put whatever you want inside this description. Um, the author start processes directive requires that both processes will be started at runtime, at, at uh, booting, basically. So we will have both processes concurrently running on our uh, sensor node. So the hello world uh, process, as I said, it starts a timer, and each time the timer fires, it increments a counter and print the value of this counter, okay? So in order to do this, we need 
a, a counter, okay, which is an integer variable, and we also use a time e timer structure, which is the object that in Contic is used for creating timers, basically. Then, um, so you you can declare uh, variables before uh, entering into the uh, actual process, okay? So before the process begin directly. So the first thing we do here inside the, the process body is to set the timer. So we use this function eTimer set to set the timer to fire in one second, okay? This is a constant that makes our timer to fire in one second. And then we enter into uh, an infinite loop. What we do in, in this infinite loop, the first thing we wait, okay? So we enter into the loop and then we wait. What should we wait for? Well, we should wait for the timer to fire, okay? So this is kind of different with respect to TinyOS where you basically set the timer and then you declared in a event what to do when the timer fired. In this case, we enter into a infinite while loop where we block and we stop for uh, waiting basically the timer. So whenever an event arrives, if we use just the, the process wait event, we will move uh, away from this instruction and since many different events can uh, wake our code up, okay, we need to check that our event was uh, an event coming from a timer. Okay? So what we do, we check if the variable ev, which is a local variable of our process, okay, defined here, we check if the ev is a timer event. Okay, we use this keyword for checking if this is a timer event. If indeed this is a timer event, it means that one second has passed. So what we can do is basically to print hello world and to print also the value of our integer, which is into the variable count, and then we can increase the variable count by one. So then next time we will see a different output. After that, we can reset the timer, so we can call the function eTimer reset, so that it will generate another event after exactly one second. And at this point, we can end our process. Okay? So this is the hello world process. Similarly, we can implement the second process, which is the one that needs to take into account of the LEDs. Now, if you start from scratch, a good thing to do is to go on the Contiki website, on the wiki, uh, internals here, input outputs. LEDs are considered outputs of the uh, operating system because they, they are a way of informing that some, something is happening. And if you go here on the LEDs, you have the LEDs API, so basically you have all the functions that you can call on the LEDs in order to, uh, to use those hardware, basically, okay? And in fact, here, what we do, well, we still have a timer structure. Again, we need a timer in order to um, toggle our LEDs. Uh, we had a variable that uh, uh, keeps uh, the state of the LEDs in order to decide which one to toggle. And then again we have the same infinite while loop where <coughs> what we do first of all, um, okay this is a, a different way of uh, making things. So e here instead of using reset at the end we set the timer each time we uh, re-execute the cycle and in this case the timer is set uh, instead uh, of using one second periodicity we use 250 milliseconds so we take this variable and we divide it by four 
And then we can use, instead of waiting for a generic event as we did here, you see here we use the process wait event, the generic event. In, the, in this process we wait for a particular condition to happen and in fact what we will check is that the event that will move away from this waiting state is a, a timer event. So basically we, instead of having these two lines of code, okay, we have a conditional wait event. Okay, so we condense the two lines of code into a single line of code. So if, if it's indeed uh, a timer that uh, woke us up, then we can uh, trigger the state of LEDs. So first we will turn all LEDs off, and then we will turn uh, the LEDs on passing the value of uh, this uh, variable, LED state, which is then incremented by 1. Okay. So at the beginning all LEDs will be off, then only LEDs 1 be, will be on, and so on and so forth, periodically. We will change the, um, the value displayed on the LEDs. And that's it. And then we can end this process as well. Okay. Let's try to go in Kuja, start a new simulation. Uh, new simulation. add a node here we will use now the blink source code okay create one node put the speed limit to 100% then what I also like to do is to here to view the LEDs of a node in order to see what happens with the LEDs and then I can start the simulation. And as you can see you have both the uh, hello world process which is each second writing a new statement with a counter which is increasing plus you have the LEDs here which are basically changing their status. Okay, And these basically are the two Contiki processes which are running uh, concurrently, so in a let's say multi threaded fashion on our node. Okay, so this example shows you how to create different processes and how to use timers in your application. Any question so far? I mean, as you you may understand the this, this functionalities that, that we are looking at are basically the same that we have seen in TinyOS and Motrana, right? More or less, all these operating systems give to you the same functionalities. They, allows you to do, they allow you to do basically the same set of things. And uh, what, my feeling is that there's no real you know, winning solution. Okay? So it depends a lot on the application that you have in mind and that you have to develop, uh, your background, your skills, okay? Um, I mean, it depends on so many factors that it's difficult to say, okay, Contiki is better than TinyOS or TinyOS is better than Motrana. Each one has its pros and cons and sometimes really depends on the developer, so on the actual person which is implementing an application and on his uh, preferences and this kind of stuff. Okay, now, um, so we have already seen Kuja a little bit, okay, but, um, so I, I will not stop on Kuja, just, just want to remind you that you have a a couple of nice features for, for, uh, in Kuja. For example, you can save a simulation and reload it later in order to maybe change just some parameters and see what are the differences between two simulations without recreating the network each time. Okay. 
Uh, you can also export it in order for other person to use the simulation and so on and so forth. Um, you have all these um, <coughs> functionalities and in particular you can actually write scripts, okay? So, so you can write a script that basically runs a simulation uh, with particular uh, features. For example, you can decide to stop a node, okay? uh, reboot um, it up and so on and so forth, write something on the log and so on and so forth. So it's, it's really interesting and again if you want to know it, to know uh, better how to use it, there's a wiki, it should be in the wiki actually. Let's see if it works. Um, simulation here, using Kuja test script to automate simulation, there's a brief, uh, let's say, um, guide on how to create those scripts, okay? So you, when you do the projects, basically, you, you may find these features interesting. It's basically the same uh, as um, Tossim uh, gives you, okay? So it gives you the same functionalities that Tossim uh, Python library gives you. Could be useful sometimes. Okay. Now, before we move on and see um, radio communication, basically, which is the last thing that we need to, to look at, um, you, you may ask yourself, okay, why do we need uh, these different proto-threads or these different processes running all together? What is the main difference uh, between using this approach and using the approach of TinyOS, okay? So one single process which is running and taking care of everything. Uh, well, at least I had this question in mind, okay? So why, why what, what's the, the purpose of all this? And I basically uh, went through a paper from the Contiki developers uh, where they explain why uh, their approach is better, okay? And it turns out uh, that the main motivation is that by using this approach with many proto-threads and many processes waiting for events and this kind of stuff, you can, in some situations, uh, really simplify the way the code looks like, okay? The source code look, looks like. And that can be useful when you have to debug code or when you have to start working on an application that someone else already developed, okay? While this can be a little bit cumbersome in TinyOS because you have so many files, a configuration to, to go into, and that could be a little bit cumbersome. So to do an example, uh, um, imagine that you have an application that has three different states, okay? So your application can be in a non-state when a timer expires and if nothing happens, the application will uh, uh, go <coughs> in a, either a waiting or an off state, okay? And from the waiting state, if something ha happens, for example, the communication, the radio communication is completed or another timer expires, you go on an off state, okay? This three state uh, machine it's basically a nice abstraction of on how the radio chip of most platform works, okay? So they are generally in an off state, then, then you turn them on, either uh, by invoking a, a function on, on when a timer expires, then you send a message and you go into a wait state, uh, and from the wait state, you generally go to the off state when the message is uh, transmitted or if something bad happened, okay? So you have these three states. Now in TinyOS, if you want to manage this state machine, so you want to implement the logic for, for uh, staying in these states, you need, well, a variable 
for storing the state in which you are in this case for example you can be either in on waiting or off state and then whenever something happens so inside the handler of your event which may be for example a timer event you have to check the state in which you were okay so the previous state and then depending on what happens you need to go to another state okay so for example if you were in a non state and uh, uh, something happens then you can either go to the waiting state or you can go to the off state if you were in the waiting state and something happened you need to go into the off state otherwise if you were into the off state and the uh, timer expired then you need to go into the on state okay so you need to write all this code just for this simple let's say three state machine the very same things uh, can be done in Contiki in just this code okay so reducing a lot the effort for a programmer okay so we have this uh, proto thread okay so the process begin and process ends here and we have a while loop that basically uh, implements this three state machine and by using wait uh, statements we can easily rewrite this state machine in a nice nicer way basically so that's basically one reason why a programmer may prefer to use Contiki instead of TinyOS because it seems or, or it looks that uh, programming style the programming style um, makes the, the life of a developer easy, easier with respect to TinyOS, for example. Um, now, if this is enough for moving from TinyOS to Contiki, well, this is something I don't know. My personal experience with this world uh, started with TinyOS and I am quite uh, happy with it. So I do not uh, know Contiki very well and I never uh, programmed any uh, large-scale application with Contiki so what I did was just uh, running these simple examples and understanding how it works and to me there's no real difference between the two so far but it may be that when you start developing very very large applications with with very very large state machines then uh, this could be in fact easier to do with Contiki Okay, finally, um, so the, the last thing that we need to, to see basically is how to transmit messages. So how to use the radio uh, chipset in Contiki. And as I said, we have basically two communication stacks already implemented in Contiki. Sorry. One is uh, the, what is called the micro TCP IP stack which basically is a lightweight implementation of the IP stack so IP addresses, IP routing and everything and, and you can directly use that but that will uh, consume a lot of resources okay? you know, because the TCP IP stack is not easy to implement you have a lot of buffers, a lot of mechanisms that you need to keep track of and so on and so forth uh, so if you just need simple messaging primitives, so simple networking primitives such as these ones, okay, single op broadcast and unicast, multi hop unicast, network flooding which is uh, a dissemination of an information from one central point to many points and data collection which is the inverse of data flooding so basically collecting data from many sensors many nodes to a single central entity then you can use the rhyme stack okay which is a custom lightweight net networking stack implemented for Contiki and the rhyme uh, stack is uh, included by default in your application when, when you include the contiki.h uh, <laughs> header and that's why we had those lines on the output uh, referring to RIME, okay? 
So if you look at the output here, you see the first line is rhyme started with address 1.0 and that means that the networking stack was started correctly and the address given by this node in the simulation is 1.0. Rhyme has these uh, two fields as addressing with, with two values basically. Uh, this is the MAC address of the node, so the physical address, which is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so on. And, uh, well, Contiki has also his MAC address included. I, I will not enter into the details of this. You, you can read it on the wiki, basically. So with Rhyme, basically, you already have quite of uh, functions that you can use in order to transmit messages. For example, if you want to use broadcast transmission, you can use this uh, structure, the broadcast con structure. Now, what happens in, in Rhyme is basically something similar to what happens in socket programming. So basically, you have to declare a connection, broadcast or unicast connection, you open this connection, which basically means uh, activating the radio interface in a particular mode, and then you pass some parameters to this connection. Uh, so, for example, the first parameter is the connection name. The second parameter is a logical channel on which the connection will operate, so something similar to the AM uh, ID of 10 US, so a logical uh, identifier of the connection. And then the third parameter is a function pointer to a function that will be called and executed when you receive a message on that connection, basically. So you can, uh, similar to Motrunner, you can set up a callback and putting the code that must be executed when you receive something inside that callback. So for example, if you want to, to see an example of this, we have a thread here, which is the example broadcast process. Well, just let's just look at the source uh, file. So if you open Here, rhyme example broadcast dot C. Okay. So you have, if you want to use um, these broadcast functions, you have to include also the net rhyme uh, header, well, plus a bunch of stuff already. And you have basically the process, which is the example broadcast process, which is the one that will be started at the beginning with the auto start uh, macro. Then first let's look at the process thread. So here we see another macro, which is an handler. So basically what to do when the process is, uh, ex when you exit from the process, and in this case the connection will be closed. We have also a knee timer here. So we begin the process and we open the broadcast uh, um, radio, basically. Then we have the while loop. What we do here, uh, we set a timer. Um, we are using some random uh, values here for setting the timer. So the our timer will not have a fixed period. Okay, but will this period will be uh, randomic, basically. We will wait uh, until the timer expires. This is yet another way of checking if a timer was expired or, or not. Then what we have to do is basically to write uh, something in the message. In this case, we will write hello in the message. And this is actually uh, different 
from uh, TinyOS where you have to specify the structure of your message and then you have to fill each uh, field separately. Here you just you just use the copy from uh, function which basically copies uh, an array of bytes directly into your message, into your packet. Okay, So you can easily uh, fill um, the content of a packet in this way. So we will just fill this packet with the string hello and then we will transmit the packet by calling this function broadcast send and if everything is okay we will print okay broadcast message sent. When we open the connection we actually have to specify which, what is the function that will be called whenever we receive a message in broadcast and this function is here, one, the, the broadcast uh, call function. Uh, this one, broadcast call equal broadcast receive, which is here. So whenever we receive a message, we will write broadcast message received from two numbers. And these two numbers will be basically the address of the node that transmitted the message. So we are on one hand transmitting messages and on the other hand printing what is what was the address of the node that transmitted a message that we have received. So we can create a new sky mode. We will load the rhyme application. Uh, <coughs> broadcast. this one let's compile it will take a while because compiling rhyme uh, takes a little bit now I just want to see why I couldn't connect to so fortunately I have the videos of the, the same lecture of today on YouTube from last year so I can check why it di didn't work Okay, should be this one. Let's see. Okay, maybe it's at the end. Back okay, here. Okay, it seems it was okay. what did I do wrong? So I will create these two nodes and then I will check it back. So I will create two nodes, okay, which are running the example broadcast application. Um, there's a nice uh, way of showing the radio environment in Contiki. So if you, um, you have these two nodes, let me just zoom out a little bit. Zoom out. Okay, so for each node you have basically in green what is the range in which you can transmit messages and in gray you have the interference range, okay, similar to this. So if I put these two nodes in each other communication range, they can uh, transmit and receive messages between them. Okay. So I can start the simulation. <clears throat> and as you can see, I from time to time see uh, messages which are transmitted and received by these two nodes. I can also view the radio traffic here. I should see some little arrows which are exchanged by the two nodes. So by doing this you can I mean simulate transmission of messages 
you can also simulate uh, um, if you um, click with the right um, click right button you can change the transmission ranges for the nodes in terms of uh, meters and uh, probability of uh, packet losses or success ratio for this transmission so you can let's say simulate different situation exactly as you did in uh, tossing by changing uh, the channel gain in the link between two nodes okay? so you can simulate channel losses and this kind of stuff um, and of course you also have the unicast uh, unicast examples which as you can imagine requires to uh, define what is the address of the node you want to transmit a message to okay let let me just see why uh, my application didn't uh, work on node red so let me use a new simulation I will Use the blink example. Uh, I will use the blink example, which was uh, printing on the output uh, each second hello world and a number which changed every time. So we create one node. Uh, let me also open node red. Okay, so let's see what I did wrong. So was a stream of C. Ah, yeah, right. So I put the slash in the wrong direction, basically. Okay, so that should be okay. So I will create the serial socket this is connected and then I will put start okay okay now you see here I have the uh, the output of the printf statement directly in node red so it means that from here I can then take this, whatever this output is and perform other uh, stuff. Logging into a database, uh, putting these two things, speak, whatever you want. Okay, good. So this closes the basically the tutorials on operating systems. Next time I will uh, explain the projects, go into the details of each project. So make sure you are here. So if you are interested, of course, in doing the project. I recall that uh, projects are not mandatory okay so you can also decide not to do the projects of course you will not get the maximum grade into on the exam basically uh, and that's it so see you next week basically. Sì, tanto io ho guardato il braccialetto che diciamo avevo in mente di fare il progetto, il progetto. Sì. poi vediamo con la presentazione però sì. vedevo che lei faceva un esempio in python vedevo c'era una stringa di codice in python per spegnere, per spegnere sì. sì perché è suggeribile utilizzare python come no per, perché um, tossim sì. per simulare tiny os okay. la simulazione okay. uh, è un file python è nel file python che si specificano quando i nodi devono essere accesi quando devo... con quella funzione python si può spegnere un nodo quindi a runtime si può simulare che un nodo viene spento e quindi la sua applicazione avrà ma lo può fare anche in cui semplicemente spostando due nodi 
quello sì, 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 quindi è sì. semplicemente un suggerimento se volete usare Tossim e non Cuccia per la simulazione sì, potete sì. usare quella funzione per spegnere e come linguaggio principale sì. uno può usare quello che volete con Tiki Tiny OS sì, sì, sì. chiaramente se fate tutto in Tiny io le cose le ho pensate per Tiny OS ma si possono fare anche per con Tiki no perché con Tiki diceva solo C nel sì. linguaggio sì, con Tiki è praticamente solo C. Sì. TinyOS alla fine è un dialetto del C, quindi più o meno siamo lì come, come difficoltà. E... Sì. 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 Comunque non sono riuscito a parlare più. E Coop. Coop su... con Tiki, eh? Tino TinyOS. Che errori le dà? Non so. Ah, no, non mi compila. Ah, non compila. Ha guardato con Tiki, c'è anche Coop su Contiki, c'è già implementato, secondo me funziona meglio, secondo me su, su Contiki funziona meglio, proprio perché appunto hanno fatto un grosso lavoro sullo stack di rete, quello di Contiki. Ma adesso, tipo, utilizza sempre una sorta di TCP? No, no, e sono delle astrazioni, ma non c'è nessuna connessione. Il nodo può andare a dormire. Sì, 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 sì. E poi un'altra cosa, se voglio delle cutane, sì. in una stesso thread o in uno o in due diversi, ah, sì, sì. Due. può averne quanti ne vuole e, de e deve mettere delle altre condizioni. Ah, si può, sì, sì, sì. Sì, sì. Sì, sì. E un time che manda in un processo risveglia tutti i processi. No, ogni processo ha le sue, ha le sue cose, sì. Almeno così, così dovrebbe essere, sì, sì. Poi chiedere, abbiamo visto un podcast, per mandarlo in unità, mi sa che l'ha detto anche. Sì, c'è sempre, c'è un altro esempio qua negli SMP Rhyme. C'è di vario tipo, c'è l'unicast senza hack, l'unicast con hack. Ci sono di vari tipi, quindi se è interessato si guarda questi esempi. Per esempio questo qui è Reliable R Unicast, Reliable Unicast. Fa vedere già come fare con le ritrasmissioni e così via. Se vuoi fare un'altra versione tipo content based, quindi sul contenuto del messaggio, posso utilizzare ad esempio Rhyme. In che senso? Eh, quello magari dentro nel messaggio metto un parametro che inizialmente la commento. Sì, chiaro, sì. Un paio di subscriber. Sì, sì, sì. Posso mandarlo in including. Sì. E ognuno con le scarpe quando lo utilizza si può utilizzare tutto sì, 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 sì. però se appunto vuole utilizzare secondo me cose di questo tipo sono già implementate il problema di Contiki è che veramente la documentazione non è chiarissima è, però TinyOS secondo me TinyOS è fatta meglio sì, non è il massimo però è meglio di Contiki che, non so perché facciano No, non perdano tempo a fare una documentazione bella, non so. L'ultima cosa. Sì. Il codice è mandato senza collegare il dispositivo al comunicato. Possiamo fondarlo in qualche modo? Cioè, questa cosa si può aiutare, non è che da un drive si riesce a mandare. Allora, è una cosa su cui tra l'altro sto lavorando adesso. E... Anche lì le cose sono veramente confusissime perché tutti dicono che è, è possibile farlo. Per esempio anche TinyOS ha un pacchetto che si chiama Deluge, scritto Deluge, che permette di inviare codice direttamente ai sensori, e, però non si può fare in simulazione, si può fare solo... Ma come funziona nella realtà? Bisogna mandare il primo pacchetto che avvisa allora, che è, è, è complicato perché nella realtà quello che succede è che il nodo ha un applicazione che sta andando incomincia a ricevere dei messaggi che contengono la nuova applicazione e questo è già un problema perché le applicazioni sono molto grosse di solito quindi c'è bisogno di veramente tanto spazio libero sul, sul sensore per mettere tutta questa applicazione che di solito non si salva in memoria RAM ma in memoria ROM sulla flash così quello che succede è che alla fine dell'arrivo di, di questa applicazione, l'applicazione è tutta in flash e il nodo cosa fa? Sostanzialmente si resetta, si spegne, si riaccende e carica come eseguibile non il programma che è l'immagine che deve eseguire ma quella che gli è appena arrivata. Si auto, questo per TinyOS, si auto resetta. 
per mod runner o con tiki in cui c'è un kernel che sta sempre attivo teoricamente l'operazione è più semplice perché non richiede il reboot del nodo ma semplicemente di spegnere un processo e attivarne un altro io posso soltanto inviare dei processi nodi o devo comunque rimanere da tutto il no no basta inviare il, l'ultimo livello posso invi- no ma dico posso inviare soltanto un pezzettino di applicazione eh no cioè no dipende dipende, dipende. cioè se la sua applicazione utilizza già un, un sacco, per esempio in uh, Motrunner, un'applicazione può, essere, può utilizzare vari altri servizi, stessa cosa in Contiki. Quindi se lei fa le cose fatte bene può fare in modo che l'applicazione in sé eh, abbia per esempio i parametri che lei vuole modificare e tutto il resto rimane attivo. Quindi lei poi quello che modifica è semplicemente il pezzettino finale. Ma in questo modo qua intendi andando a modificare tutto il programma settando tutti i parametri? O no, il sostituisce il codice sostanzialmente. Sì. Ah, sì. Però deve scrivere l'applicazione in maniera modulare. Se lo immagini come una costruzione di Lego, in cui lei rimane, lascia tutti i pezzi uguali e cambia solo un blocchettino. Questo lo può fare se tutti gli altri pezzi ah, rimangono lì. In TinyOS questo non è possibile farlo perché un'applicazione TinyOS è, non è modulare, quindi è, deve cancellare tutto e rimettere tutto sotto. L'ultima cosa che mi ha fatto venire in mente mentre ho risposto, 